Police started early this morning rounding up their suspects. Fifteen in all brought into the southeastern district city police headquarters. Seven others had already been indicted. Well, someone would either pay cash or offer property for sale for food stamps uh, with a rule of thumb of about 50% of the value of the food stamp. So they're either, uh, either receiving the food stamps for cash, paying undercover agents cash, or they're giving undercover agents property. And we've recovered literally thousands of dollars worth of property. This is how the food stamp scam would work. Let's say I'm the one who's trying to pull the scam in. You legally receive food stamps from the government. I would come to you and offer you a deal. If, for instance, you had $100 of food stamps, I might come to you with a stolen television set and offer you a swap. Then I'll take those food stamps and illegally trade them for cash at a store. By the time the transaction is finished, I've paid out nothing but come away with $100 in cash. In addition to that, many of those arrested today owned their own stores that accepted food stamps. So police say it was easy for those suspects to take the illegally obtained food stamps and trade them in for cash. All 15 suspects appeared in court today. Food stamp fraud is a federal offense that carries a maximum of five years in prison. Today, a magistrate set bail for many at $10,000. How widespread is the problem of illegal dealing in food stamps? Joyce Jefferson looked into it. Hey, sir. Hey, sir. Well, someone would either pay cash or offer property for sale for food stamps uh, with a rule of thumb of about 50% of the value of the food stamp. So they're either either receiving the food stamps for cash, paying undercover agents cash, or they're giving undercover agents property. And we've recovered literally thousands of dollars worth of property. Just, I'm coming back from vacation. All Food stamps. Legally, they can only be used to buy food, but on the street, they're almost as good as cash. Margaret Bailey depends on $160 worth of food stamps to feed her family, and she says she sees a lot of trading on the black market. The going rate usually is like half price or seven for ten, and people will approach you to buy food stamps or to sell food stamps. They can take place anywhere, you know, anywhere. The market is everywhere, in the store, on the street in the food stamp office, you know, the, the transactions are being made anywhere, but you just don't go out in the open and do it right out in the open on the corner, you go where it's more private and do it. Food stamps have become an important part of our economy. In the last year, Marylanders received about $170 million worth of food stamps. Uh, therefore, they do become Maryland uh, and the United States' second currency. Uh, right after the dollar bills comes food stamps. They are a negotiable instrument that can be used by anybody. You or I could use them if we had possession of them. Though sometimes food stamps are illegally used for non-food items, Mrs. Bailey says the market for food stamps exists because people need more than they're getting to survive. Most people I know would rather buy them. They're not selling theirs. They're keeping what they got and trying to buy something for somebody. People that don't have children that don't want to use the food stamps for food, rather have the cash, so they'll sell their stamps for the people that got children and need the extra food stamps. Mrs. Bailey says the black market for food stamps would probably dry up if only the government would provide enough food stamps to feed a family for the whole month. Joyce Jefferson, News Scene 2.